How we doing, everybody? How are you? It's Wolf Den podcast time. Everybody, come here. Hello. Come here and welcome. Nice being here. Hey. I, the transition's slow. That's weird. It, like It's like messed up. I might have to turn it off. Anyway. Uh, hi. Hey. Uh, I hope you're you're well. I'm good. Will, how are you? Uh, I feel like my allergies legitimately want to kill me oh okay <laughs> it's been a very it was a very tough morning it was a very tough afternoon Hat is going through some shit too. it's awful it's, it's awful bad. out here on long island uh i imagine it's pretty bad in a lot of america mm-hmm. is there anywhere where allergies are not a problem well i mean i hear texas is particularly bad i feel like desert states mm-hmm. like nevada arizona because it's dry that but that can't that also be bad yeah, we can make your nose bleed, but sometimes uh-huh. I would rather that than like, you know, being stuffy and sneezing, you know, and I'm a dad, so I sneeze very loudly. <laughs> yes. That's just what happens. <laughs> Something just gets turned on. Yeah. It just... <laughs> uh, Gamers Christmas says, you are wrong. Still have wicked allergies in Nevada. He's been, he this particular man in the chat yeah. has had a very good time the past two, day or so. Yeah, just saying you are wrong because <laughs> I did uh I did the Vita hack yesterday. Okay, boy, let me tell you, people love just telling me I'm wrong about the Vita hack. <laughs> but but it's not easy. <laughs> I'd imagine there's places where allergies you know are better yeah. and worse, but I'd imagine they're pretty bad. Maybe pretty my much allergies are not as bad in like a place like Nevada, but like somebody from Nevada's allergies might not be as bad in a place like here. I know? don't know. I mean, you're you're allergic to different things. Yeah, you're like you things. know, human bodies are weird. You, you one day you're fine, the next day you you can't get up because you slept wrong. You know, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> I have allergies, but I don't know what. It's just every time it goes from cold to hot. Yeah, like the seasonal changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but cold to hot. Right. Hot to cold, not a problem. Cold to hot is See, a problem. I, I get it both ways. Sometimes I get it both ways, but for the, I always, it's a sure shot that if it gets really hot all of a sudden. Yeah. And in New York, that happens. Yeah. That, that it, it, it goes from like 30 degrees and then the next day it'll be 80. Yeah. And that happens usually around like April or, mm-hmm. or May. Anyway, what are we? This is, a, this is a video game podcast, right? Oh, we're not a meteor meteorology podcast. Meteorology? Yeah, that's the te- technical term for weatherman. Weather guy. Okay, yeah. all right, I understand. Uh, anyway, there are things to talk about this week. Believe it or not, it's not. Uh, it's not just Zelda time. Nope, we're Although over Zelda. Is. Zelda was last week. Zelda <laughs> is old news. We're all, we're already moving on to the next stuff. We don't give a shit about. Yeah, Zelda no anymore. more Zelda. We will never talk about Zelda on this podcast again. And you should just throw out your copies <laughs> of uh, Tears of the Kingdom unless you downloaded your Switch digitally. In which case, just throw out your Switch and buy a the new whole one. Switch. Yeah. yeah, you can't play it anymore. Uh, today we're we want to talk about how Nintendo's being sued. Yeah, oh, wow. it's about time somebody stuck it to Nintendo. Gotta admit, we lied to you a little bit. Not much going on. Yeah, this no, week. It's a lot of little things. It's a light week. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can make the topics interesting. I also want to bring up that the 3DS got an update because that was a little that was yeah. a, an interesting morning for me <laughs> because I needed to see yeah. how it works with the hacked 3DS. Also, it's weird that the 3DS got an update at all. Yeah, after it was allegedly being shut down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other stuff, like our friends released in Xbox HDMI adapter. That's right. We uh, have friends. I and, forgot about that. And I got some things to say about it. <laughs> uh, and then some other stuff. Also, Nintendo delisted Pac-Man. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, it's... it's uh. That's not why they're being sued, though. <laughs> that's not why, but... uh. They should be. Yep. Uh, But before we get into that, there's two important things we want to talk about. Like, for example, uh, there's there's games. Yes. For Nintendo Switch. Yes. Nintendo may be uh, deserving of a lawsuit, but that doesn't mean they're not going to give you free games if you're subscribed to um, Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. Because these are Mm -hmm. Game Boy Advance games. They are Super Mario Advance, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2, and Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3. Oh my god! So now, basically, all the Mario Advance uh, Mario games are on Switch Online plus expansion pack. So, Super Mario Advance Four is Super Mario Brothers. 
three. Correct. And that's on Switch Online already. Yes. And that has the e-reader levels yes. in it. It's really cool. Yes. My understanding is these games are just ports. Yes and no. Okay. It's they're like ports in like the Nintendo sense where like they're the same game, but like there's little tweaks here and there. Okay. Because they're not exactly the same. So Super Mario Advanced is Super Mario Brothers 2 from the NES. And it is an updated version of the Super Mario All-Stars version of Super uh, Mario Brothers so 2. So that is actually the first time that I played Super Mario Brothers 2 was this. Or I guess my first full playthrough right. was, was yeah, this. Yeah, because I know we've played it on NES. Like, we must have rented it from Blockbuster. Our friend of ours had it or something. Because I definitely played the NES version. Yeah, this but, was... this, But, like, maybe... I don't think we ever rented it from Blockbuster. Okay. My first, like... We didn't rent a lot of NES stuff. No. No. Uh, my first, like... I might have dabbled, like, at Sears. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> my first, like, real sit-down play, yes. play for a long yeah. time was this version. Because we yeah. had it for some reason. Well, because it was the first Game Boy Advance game. Oh. This was the launch game for it. I did not know yeah. that. So, uh... So I don't know what they added because I never played through the original. It's a lot. A big thing that they added was voice clips. Like everybody talks in this game and they won't shut up. <laughs> and it's kind of annoying. Um, but it's mostly like quality of life improvements. Like it saves your progress. Uh, and like little tweaks here and there. I know the voice clip stuff because they're in Super Mario uh, 3. Yeah. And it's weird. Because yeah. Mario does not shut up. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Super Mario World, Super Mario Advance 2 is Super Mario World from the SNES. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, same game, but like little tweaks here and there. Try to make, give it like a new fresh coat of paint in a way. Uh, same thing with Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3, which is, uh, Super Mario 2 Yoshi's Island, uh, from the SNES. Uh, I want to see what the changes are exactly. I know, um. So I'm just going to read the Super Mario Advance wiki here yeah. it's a remake of super mario bros 2 developed uh by nintendo research Develop development 2 as a launch title for the game boy advance released in japan on march 2001 holy shit and in north america and europe in june the same year it is based on super mario all-stars remaster of super uh, uh, for the super nes and also contains a remake of the original mario bros i think they all did yeah uh Super Mario Advance includes many new features, gameplay mechanic changes, graphical and audio enhancements, and stylistic and aesthetic alterations from the All-Stars edition, with the most significant changes being the addition of the enemy Roberto, a robotic Birdo, replacing Mauser as the Ma as the boss of World 3. I don't remember that at all. I don't either. The addition of the Yoshi Challenge, in which players may revisit stages to search for Yoshi eggs, a new point scoring system, multiple hit combos in, in large sprites, and digital voice acting. So really not much. Yeah. I want to... What's Roberto? I don't remember Roberto. I don't remember at Roberto at all. I played I remember there being several Birdos, but yeah, not a like robot one. Like every level or something. Yeah. Um, well, there's I, a manga version. I do know. Yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that for the longest time, Nintendo was porting this version of Yoshi's Island to other systems, not the original. Okay. But I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you're saying, oh, this version of Yoshi's Island? Yeah, the Game Boy Advance version uh, of Yoshi's Island. The game was this. This is about Super Mario Advance, though the first one. Right. So, so Super Mario Bros. Two. It's very confusing. Yeah. The game was real re-released on the wii u's virtual console in japan in north america blah blah blah, blah. okay so yeah cool all right so my, very minor changes right i'm gonna i'm gonna say except for roberto roberto seems like a pretty big change yeah that was my uh name in italian class <laughs> roberto mine was mario i picked mario did you actually yeah because because nobody told me that uh, there was that Guillermo is the Italian equivalent, so I'm just like, all right, I'll do that one. What did our family call you when we visited Italy when I was three and you were five? Because they refused to call you Will, probably Willie or Willie Pete. No, I th I there's no W, right? So they were like, 
what is that name? And they were like they must, offended. Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they call. I thought they made up a name for you. They probably call you Billy. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, uh. That's it. You get in the Super Mario Advance games. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But that, all of these games exist on Nintendo Switch Online anyway. In, so. in a different capacity, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you grew up with these versions of the games and maybe you're used to them. I mean, to be yeah. fair, Super Mario Advance is the best version of Super Mario 2. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll allow that because like, there's, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> it's Super Mario 2. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a lot of good things to say. Yeah, about it, it is the black sheep of the series for sure. I want to also mention that uh, before we started, I left my coffee to sit in this ember mug for a little bit, and uh, it smelled like hazelnut. Yeah. And it was because my ember mug was on full blast. It was cooking. <laughs> it was boiling the coffee. <laughs> now I put it too low. Now I got to raise it. Anyway, uh, other things we wanted to talk about. Uh, there's a state of play going on. Tomorrow. Yeah. Which we're not going to yeah, obviously so be able yeah. to talk about. I mean, we'll talk about it next week. Uh, but yes, uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific or 9 p.m. British Standard Time, uh, a wealth of new game and IP uh, are headed to PS5 and PSVR 2. Uh, this is uh, the PlayStation blog from Sid Schumann, Senior Director of Sony Interactive Entertainment. Uh, it's almost time to see what's next. The PlayStation Showcase broadcast live next Wednesday, May 24th. Uh, the show will run a bit over an hour focusing on PS5 Whoa. and PSVR 2 games in development from top studios from around the world. Expect a glimpse at several new creations from PlayStation Studios as well as spellbinding games from our third-party partners and indie creators. I want to point out that uh, Dad in the chat oh, says boy. they called him Billo. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Because, oh, it makes it Italian. That's true. <laughs> I understand. Uh, one hour is a long time for a yes. state of play. So uh, I was getting people asking me if I was going to do a thing for this. Like right. if I was going to stream it or whatever. Because I do that for Nintendo events and stuff. And I used to do it for like big Sony events. Yeah. But they've been so bad for a <laughs> long time. The Sony ones. They, I mean, the last one was pretty good. Yeah. But they're not worth going live, you know, at... What time is this? Four? Four in the afternoon? Yeah. yeah. It's not worth ruining my afternoon. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, the, the fact that it's an hour like makes yeah. it seem like it's a big deal. I feel like there might actually also, be like, something been, good in here. There's been word that like this is the equivalent of their E3 bro uh, showcase. True. This would be the equivalent of their E3 showcase. It feels too early. It does, but... Like, yeah, I mean, in, they, they won't have... Yeah, they won't have one. Like, yeah. like, it's too close to E3 time. But it usually they would... It feels weird because because of COVID, everything's delayed. Yeah. But it feels weird for them to do one before the time they would normally do E3 stuff. Right. I mean, like, E3's not happening anymore. And, like, everybody just makes up their own rules now. So yeah. maybe the Sony's just like, you know what? Let's do this now. Let's just do this now while Microsoft is eating dirt <laughs> and really, like, stick it to them. Yeah, people are not happy with Microsoft no, right now. No, no. I'm going to... So, I mean... I'm not. I'm not telling you how to do your job or anything. I'm just saying it sounds like this might be one worth streaming because it sounds like it's going to be a big one. Oh, I'm for sure not doing that. <laughs> but I, I feel like there might be a nugget of something in here. Right. The problem is, you know, you go live at four o'clock, watch an hour long thing for one game yeah. that you might be interested in. I'm just not interested in a lot of what Sony has. Right. Um. I found a list of Sony states of play. The last one they did was in April. So that wasn't that long. That was ago. Final Fantasy, I think. Uh Second state of play at 2023 focused solely on Final Fantasy. Yeah. Yep. Uh before that was February and that one was pretty good. It had the Suicide Squad which uh um, upset a lot of people because yes. <laughs> we learned that it was like a uh live service live Destiny service thing. like, yeah. Uh, Street Fighter 6, which I'd like to actually get my hands on. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3, which I guess people are interested in. Chai? T-C-H-I-A. Wind Waker-like exploration game. Uh, Goodbye Volcano High and Humanity. Okay, maybe that wasn't the good one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh. Yeah. Before that was September, and that one actually had a good one. Yeah. That, that one was good. Uh, 
I think it might be possible they do one late June or, or early July also. Maybe. Uh, but this one's an hour, so there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. This feels, you're right, this feels more like an E3 situation. Uh, so I think that there's a possibility there's some nugget of good information here. It seems like they're still trying to tell people PSVR 2 is a good idea. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're saying there's going to be PSVR 2 stuff. Well, I mean, they sunk how much millions of dollars into it? They got to get people buying it. And they say a new IP. What do you think yeah. the new IP could be? I hope it's like an actual new IP. Because so far, like, aside from Returnal, Sony hasn't really had like a new IP. Yeah. Like this generation. I mean, it's hard for them yeah. to do big budget new IPs. They did recently purchase that studio. Yes. That had, that was like people who worked on Destiny and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they could be working on something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot the name of the studio was. So, yeah, there there might be a little nugget of good stuff. Yeah. I'll watch it for sure. I'll probably tweet about it, but mm-hmm. there's no way I'm going live for that. Um, So, we'll see. So I, by the time you're listening to this, you could probably check my Twitter and see if I had anything to say about any yep. of this stuff on, uh, on the uh, PlayStation State of Play. Next, we can finally talk about why we're here. Yes. You subscribers, thank you for <laughs> the subscriptions. Uh, we got... I'm late. I'm late. Hold on. It's <laughs> giving me a million things. Uh, thank you for the subscriptions. Uh, Mike at, at J File for the two months. Hi, Mom. Okay. <laughs> uh, Summer Gamer, thanks for the six months. Hey, Wolf Bros. Hello. How you doing? Big Boosh, thanks for the 19 months. Did you guys see that GameStop is raising the price of their pro membership? Also, high will. Hey, I did see that. Uh, it's like I think they're raising about like 10 bucks. Um, I didn't put it in the keep because I have another GameStop story that I find much more interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I did see that they're raising the price of the pro membership by 10 bucks. Best Buy is also raising the price of, I think, their like elite tier membership or something. Yeah, I haven't had a. GameStop Pro membership since I worked there. Yeah. Um I think your account still works. Like I give them no, it your does. email. Yeah. It, uh, you get points, but yeah. you don't get uh the discount. Not like I shop stuff. at GameStop anymore. I don't buy used stuff. Like when I worked there, it was worth it because I think it I'm pretty sure I I don't know if I got it for free. What? Games? The, the, no, the um the pro membership. Oh. I don't know if I got it for free. I don't know. We got Game Informer for months when you were working there. Yeah, I might have paid for it. But but honestly, I would buy used games. It would yeah. stack with your uh, employee discounts. Yeah. So it was worth it then. Uh, but then I stopped working there and I never bought used stuff anymore. Yeah. I remember when Uncharted 4 came out and I was working in the city. Uh-huh. Uh, I think I was still technically employed by GameStop because <laughs> I did like midnight launches. Yeah. Um, I picked up Uncharted 4 uh, at the GameStop by my job in the city. And uh, the guy tried to upsell me to like the collector's edition, <laughs> and like, uh, and then he tried to get me to renew my pro membership. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I like, yeah. yelled at him. I was like, bro, you're putting in my employee discount, right? Yeah. I don't. I know what you're doing. <laughs> you, you're like, you could be cool with me. Yeah, you could be cool with me, guy. He was like, you sure you don't want the collector's edition or like the, you know, like the special the edition I, that was ninety dollars for no reason. You got like the one that came in like the fancier box for the pre-order. I think you got the steelbook pre-order. It wasn't steelbook. I didn't get the fucking ninety dollar one. Whatever right, I'm not. You got one that wasn't the standard release. I didn't pay extra for it. Okay. I got I because the guy tried to get me to do that and I I wouldn't do it. Um yeah, and then he tried to get me to renew my subscription. And I was like, bro, dude, you freaking just put in my employee discount. I could see right through your lies. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, uh the GameStop Pro membership is only worth it if you buy a lot of used games or if you trade in games a lot. Right. Otherwise, avoid it at all costs. There's no reason to have that shit. Or if you want Game Informer some good articles there sometimes. yeah yeah and there, good cover art there's one that our buddy alex just made about uh the 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 history of those uh nintendo mascot outfits yes from the 90s yes. commercials that was fun yeah anyway now we can talk about nintendo yes games soon. uh mario kart tour lawsuit calls out immoral loot box gotcha system 
Uh, at the end of last year, Nintendo removed the gotcha elements from its mobile racing game, Mario Kart Tour. It replaced the system where players would fire a pipe to receive a random item with a spotlight shot. Although the item system has already been updated, Axios reports a young gamer with the approval from his father has filed a lawsuit in the United States against the video game giant over supposed immoral microtransactions with the mobile racer. The suit was originally filed at the state level in March and last week entered the federal system. Uh, here are the details courtesy of the source. Uh, the suit calls for refunds for all miners in the United States who paid to use Mario Kart Tour's spotlight pipes, which delivers players in-game rewards using undisclosed odds. Until last year, Mario Kart Tour players could spend real money to, uh, to repeatedly activate the pipes in the hopes they'd randomly produce useful upgrades. Its plaintiff, identified as N.A., um, spent more than $170 on Mario Kart Tour microtransactions via his father's credit card, which was linked to their Nintendo user account. Calling the plaintiff N.A. is confusing. I think because, like... that's Nintendo America. Yeah. <laughs> I think because, like, the, the plaintiff's a minor... Yeah, so they had to really put in his actual name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's claimed Nintendo intentionally made the game difficult to proceed without pay using dark patterns, especially encouraging players to spend more. Um, the suit goes on to mention how the loot box mechanic in uh, within Mario Kart Tour reinforced addictive behavior, likening it to gambling. As noted by Axios, these practices allegedly violate Washington State's Consumer Protections Act and California business laws. I'm glad this happened. I mean, I I also saw this when I was playing Mario Kart Tour. I was yeah. like, it's the, the the problem is this is a this is an issue with mobile games. Period. Yes, and uh, it I think it's a little unfair that Nintendo takes the fall for it, but somebody's got to. I it's it's unfair, but at the same time, it's not really fair. It, I, at the same time, it is fair. Mm -hmm. It is fair that it's Nintendo because when Nintendo first entered the mobile market. They made a big deal about how they're not going to... They're going to try and do it the way they used to do on uh, console. Mm -hmm. So, like, they would release free games and, like, they would send updates and, like, they wouldn't have, like, all this microtransactions out the wazoo. Uh, Super Mario Run was $10 and you can get the whole game. You know, they weren't really into playing the, the, uh, the typical mobile game game. You know, yeah. of like a free game and there's just microtransactions and loot boxes. Yeah. And that crossed over to when companies like EA and Ubisoft and Activision tried to take that model and put it into console games. Nintendo was still saying, no, that's not how we do things. We're not going to yeah. do that in our games. And here we ha are in 2023. They made a game where they did exactly that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what everybody says happens with it happened with it kids got addicted they spend way too much money on this stuff and now they're gonna get in trouble for it there's plenty of mobile games that are more popular than mario kart tour that uh have more egregious microtransactions yes. that that do uh i mean it's easy to pick on nintendo because they very clearly are targeting kids with mario kart tour, yes where these other games might not be like clash yeah. of clans like I mean, yeah I, kids are playing it but it's not necessarily like a, a targeting a kid yeah um but yeah, these these loot box and microtransactions uh, need to be regulated in some yeah. sort of way. So this is, I mean, this is a clash action lawsuit. So I don't know if it sets a precedent, but it will scare companies away from doing something like. I that. mean, it'll, if if it if it sides in favor of the plaintiff, it'll set a precedent. Mm -hmm. Well, either way, it'll set a precedent because if uh, if this kid wins, then that sh that you know scares companies from doing the same thing. Um, and if Nintendo wins, that basically tells companies, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You can just keep doing it. But by the same token, it's bizarre to me that we're still having this conversation about loot boxes and like, you know, the randomized delivery of like loot and stuff, because I thought we solved this problem after Star Wars Battlefront 2. I remember talking about that in our parents' basement. Yeah. When we did yeah, the show back there. In the day, back <laughs> when I was thin. Um... <laughs> Yeah, like that was a whole big controversy. Uh, country, entire countries passed laws to regulate that stuff. Bob Iger called the president of EA and basically said, "Get that out of this game. It's giving us a bad look." Yeah, you know, it was a it was a disaster. It was a pure nightmare. Now Disney does that shit. Yes, the Disney's games now yeah. have like weird egregious loot boxes. Yeah, yeah. So 
And it's it's amazing how we thought we were past this. We thought we had moved on, but companies and even companies you think are you know not the most guilty of this crap are still going forward with this. Mm-hmm. And it's it sucks that you know we have to keep having this fight. Yeah, no, it it should be uh, smacked down where it where it can, but yeah. it should be a regulation. I guess the easiest way to regulate it is to have it regulated by Apple and Google. Have have them right be held accountable in some way. Yeah, but at the same time, they're not because Apple makes thirty percent mm-hmm. of whatever revenue they get. And that's where they get that all this fucking... That includes microtransactions, yeah, though. That, yeah, that's how so, they get all this fucking money to fund Apple TV and whatnot. So I think that's where the lawsuits should be yeah. targeted at, you know? Well... Because you're just playing the game at this point. Right. Like, but, this is... Sta- microtransactions are standard now. Like, Nintendo tried to do the whole thing where, you know, you make the game free and then you, you have a $10 microtransaction to unlock the whole I game. I feel like a $10 is a macro transaction, yeah. but... But, but yeah, they have, that didn't work. So now they're playing the game that everybody else is with I these mean, stupid loot boxes that are very uh, obviously misleading. I don't think necessarily Apple and Google are forcing people, forcing developers to put microtransactions in their games. I feel like it's just the way the market of the you know mobile gaming ecosystem has become. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. It's not necessarily their fault. It's not necessarily Apple and Google's fault. You know, it's just the way things have happened. People, when they look but, at games on phone, they expect them to be either cheap or free, but they need, but companies need a way to boost revenue from that. It's not their fault, but that would be the easiest way to stop it, right. to, to get rid of it because they're the ones who control the market of yeah. the mobile games. Mm-hmm. So you can smack the the developers down one at a time, but there's always going to be the little ones that, that keep popping up. Yeah. The easiest way to clear the board r- right away is is target Apple, t- t- target Google, but you don't even have to do anything like sue them for millions of dollars. Yeah. You can just be like, hey, put a regulation in place or we will sue you for millions of dollars. Well, I mean, I feel like that was also kind of what, uh, what Epic was trying to do. Yeah, I mean, but, but they were doing it. It was big company versus big company. Right, they're but, taking my money. You know, but I think Epic was trying to prove more. So, I mean, I don't even think necessarily Epic wanted to win that case. I think they just wanted to prove that a- that Apple and Google, but specifically Apple, have a lot of control over these mobile yeah. marketplaces to the, like almost too much control over it. Yeah, and there's not enough freedom to disseminate your product out into the mobile market what was the outcome of that apple won everything except they have to snap start allowing uh in uh in app purchases to not necessarily go through apple like apple needs to allow uh apps to offer different payment methods not through apple Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a big deal. That is, that's yeah. kind of what they were fighting against. That that was a big deal, but like everything else they lost. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was like their big problem. Well, that is that for micro? Yeah, it's for micro. Yeah. That's for in in app purchases. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that was their biggest issue. That well, their biggest issue, I guess, was the thirty percent that Apple takes. Yeah. Period. But that they, they that was on microtransactions because Fortnite was a free game. Yeah. Uh, I just went to see if Fortnite is available on iOS, and it is not. But it yeah. is on Android. Yeah, you have to sideload it. Oh, uh, you can either download Fortnite to your device or play using cloud gaming. Yeah. Please note, cloud gaming requires... Okay, download now. Check your device for compatibility. Locate the download file. Oh, my God. Yeah, you have to, si- yeah, you have yeah. to download it using the browser. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, nobody's playing that game anymore. Anyway. No, apparently people are. Like I was just listening to uh, the Get Played podcast, very good podcast, by the way. Um, and like one of the co-hosts said, she was playing it a lot, and she's like still into it. I people, it, it, it had a resurgence with the auto build stuff. Yeah, but uh, I haven't heard anything about it. I mean, there's, I don't know if you've heard of uh, this movie called Star Wars. But oh yeah, characters from that. <laughs> I I did see that they do have characters from that. Yeah, uh, I want to get back into Call of Duty. Warzone Mobile is supposed to be coming out any minute. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll, I'll jump on that. I'm still trying to get through Resident Evil 4 remake. I started. I, I made, am too, and then but freaking Zelda's taking up too I much time. I made a list. I made like an actual like list of like games I actually want to complete in my backlog, mm-hmm. and I'm just gonna slowly chipping away at it. However, I made the mistake of introducing my daughter to Sonic the Hedgehog. And I actually let her play a little bit of it, <laughs> and now she keeps coming into my office going, "Daddy, can I play Sonic the Hedgehog?" Give her a little handheld. I, I think I'm gonna have to. I, the Amber Nick is too complicated. Get the goddamn coral switch light out of our parents' house. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have take to. that. I think we have to put Sonic Mania on it. Put add her to our Switch Online family plan. Get all of the Genesis games. Yeah, and then there you go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. Okay, it's settled. All right, there you go. She's got a console. <laughs> Do we have like a? We need like a Nerf case. I'm sure they make Nerf cases. Oh, they right? definitely yeah. make Nerf cases. Nerf Nintendo Switch Lite. There's apparently a game. That doesn't surprise me. Nope. Case. It's got to be a live-in case, though. Yeah. They have them, but it's not like a Nerf. Yeah, one. it's not like Nerf branded. Yeah. I mean, we have plenty of live-in cases. Yeah, no. It, it's Nerf or nothing. Also, Switch Lite's pretty damn powerful yeah and i mean like it's nintendo so like it doesn't break yeah yeah and if it does i have an extra case <laughs> like if you break the like outer shell yeah. I have an extra one uh anyway what are we talking about oh yeah loot boxes yeah. somebody's gotta be held not held accountable but somebody has to there has to be a way to strike down these like uh uh egregious loot boxes that are uh especially if they're targeting kids but yeah. just because it's gambling it, it's it's it even if it's not targeting kids yeah it is a form of gambling and uh there's regulations on all other forms of gambling yeah so there should be regulations on on this sort of stuff too um anyway moving on Mm -hmm. this was a big deal uh that happened yesterday and everybody was tweeting at me and, and wanted me to talk about it. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not interested. But anyway, here you go. Analog Duo pre-order. Uh, f- yeah, after what seems like years of waiting, we finally have a pre-order day for the Analog's next retro home console, the Analog Duo. It seemed like years of waiting because it actually was years of waiting. We first heard about this back in October of 2020. But obviously, pandemic, chip shortages, delays. Uh, you know how things have gone in the past few years in tech and gaming. But fear not. Retro game fans, the Analog Duo was just announced for its pre-order starting May 19th, uh, a few days ago, at 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, and the retail price for the Duo is 250 U.S. dollars. So this is cool, and I'm glad it exists. Yes, but I have no interest in PC <laughs> Engine and Turbo Graphics games. The, yeah, at all. this new home console from the makers of the Analog Pocket is referred to. Uh, uh, sorry, we'll deliver on the Duo concept, playing original PC Engine and Turbo Graphics 16 games. For those unfamiliar with either 16-bit console from Hudson Soft and NEC, they were essentially uh, one and the same, much like the Famicom and the Nintendo Entertainment System. Japan had the PC Engine, and North America had the Turbo Graphics 16. Uh, both consoles were capable of making use of an external Super CD-ROM expansion as well. Hudson and NEC released the, the PC Engine Duo in Japan. Uh, which combined the original PC Engine and the Super CD-ROM into one unit. Uh, so obviously that's where the Duo comes from, the Analog's new console name. So yeah, this is um, this is an Analog uh, clone console uh, that can play both original Hue card, TurboGrafx-16 Hue cards, and um, the Super CD, uh, TurboGrafx CD games. So this is a big deal because this is their first CD-based Yes. This is Analog's first CD-based yes. uh, uh, the FPGA emulation console. Uh, so that's a big deal. Yes. The only games I'm interested in are the Bomberman games. Yes, because it's Hudson. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's it. Yeah, I mean, this is really cool. And I wish I was into Turbo Graphics games. So I, would, <laughs> so I would want this in a heartbeat. But like... You know, most Turbo Graphics games like that I would want to play. I played on other systems, like yeah, the, the like Wii. Bomberman, yeah, like Bomberman or like Bonk, Bonk's Adventure, um, the original Splatterhouse. You know, those are all available on like the Wii and other systems. So playing Turbo Graphics sixteen games is a lot easier than it has been in the past. Um, I mean, that said, I mean if there were no sense one of these things. I'll, I'll go out and buy some Turbo Graphics games. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
I am interested in uh I'm I want to play through a lot of uh bo- Pocket Bomberman. I post play I've been playing that on on the little portable emulator. That's pretty good. Which one's Pocket? That's the side scroller. But it's uh, it's Bomberman, so you place the bombs. Yeah. But it's side scroll. You gave so me it's weird. ROMs for Bomberman Max, which I think is like their Pokemon style RPG. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's still Bomberman. So it's like yeah. an RPG. Well, it's not really like an RPG. It's level based. Okay. But there's like an overworld map. Yeah. So it's still Bomberman, but there's just an overworld right. map. And it's there there are two cartridges. There's a Bomberman cartridge and a Max cartridge. Yeah, well, there's a red and blue, I think. Yeah, there's yeah, because like straight up... man was blue and Max was red. Oh, uh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, I sh- you should also have Pocket Bomberman. I'm pretty sure I do, and yeah. that's very good. Yeah. Also, the pause screens in these games are gorgeous. <laughs> it's like this gorgeous Game Boy yeah. art. Um, uh, that reminds me, I got to bring over my analog pocket because I copied all the ROMs that you gave me from the Amberdeck, and none of the SNES ones work, except for Link to the Past. That's, I think that's Famicom. I think I think yeah, my, your link to the past is Super Famicom. Okay. Yeah, but all the SNES SNES specific games aren't loading on the analog pocket. Yeah, bring it over. I can give you just my whole yeah SD card for my analog pocket. Yeah, because that yeah. has all. Of the yeah, I did just update it to the new firmware. So, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. Oh yeah, I don't have mine updated. To, I'll, it'll be yeah, fine. it's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the tech specs of the analog duo, game compatibility, Hue cards and turbo chip cards, uh, CD-ROM, super CD-ROM, arcade CD-ROM. It is region free, worldwide compatibility, um, original style Hue card cartridge slot, original style PC engine controller port. Uh, fun fact, it only supported one controller. It only had one controller port. If you want to play multiplayer, you needed a multi-tap. That's ridiculous. Uh, that's why it failed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Two USB uh, ports for wired and for wired controllers and accessories, an SD card slot, um, HDMI video output to 1080p, uh, for, 48 kilohertz, 16-bit uh, digital audio via HDMI, has a headphone jack with a volume wheel, uh, Bluetooth, 2.4 gigahertz, and two USB inputs, scan line and scalar options, uh, an 8-bit do TG16 gamepad with a 2.4 wireless uh, receiver. Uh, included receiver not required for playing with the duo, mm. um, and yeah, the the dimensions. It's a it's fairly big. <laughs> yeah, I'm again. I'm I'm happy it exists. I'm assuming it's also HDMI. They're, yeah, they're all yeah HDMI, it is right? HDMI. Yeah. That's like the biggest reason to get something yeah. like this. Uh, because it it it's as close to original hardware as you're gonna get. Plus, uh, upscaling and easy hookup to your new TV. Yeah. So. That's the best reason to get it, but yeah, absolutely. This is a very niche product. That yeah, I'm assuming they're not going to make too many of. Them. Yeah, and it's 250 bucks, so it is expensive. And I think that's mostly because of the CD-ROM drive in there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, of note, it does not include the open FPGA chip like the Pocket does. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, none of their home consoles did. Right, but this will include their at new analog OS. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. it'll have like, libraries like and safe states and all that stuff. Uh, uh, I mean, also, all of their consoles get hacked pretty quickly, so yeah. uh, you'll be able to sideload ROMs on this probably yeah. the day it comes out. But don't expect to be playing like, you know, Super Nintendo games on here. It's probably just going to be playing. Yeah, probably Turbo just Turbo games. games. Yeah uh flow in the chat says maybe a dumb question but how is this legal for analog because it's not emulation right no uh, even if it i mean it is emulation yes it's, it's hardware hard- emulation it's not software emulation. but even if it was software emulation it's still legal yes because they're not doing the games yes there, there was one of the court cases yeah. that we always <laughs> talk about yeah uh said a president that uh a press a precedent yes that's the word that uh Console BIOSes are not copyrighted. Yeah. So they use the BIOS of the Turbo Graphics, and it's perfectly legal for some reason. Don't question well, it. it. We're 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 happy to be here. I think basically what they're actually doing is they're rever- It's it's legal to reverse engineer, um, hardware and software right. to figure out how it works, and then use that information to build your own version of it, and especially something. 
like that's old, like the Turbo Graphics sixteen. So I'll, I'll say hardware and the BIOS. The BIOS, for the hardware. yeah. Software is different, yeah, because that you could include a game, yeah. Uh, but but the physical chip, they reverse engineered and put it on FPGA, so yeah. that's legal. The BIOS, which would be required to boot the thing, that is legal. The games themselves are not legal, and that's why you yeah. need a cartridge. You have to play. provide your own games. Yeah. Although, this gets hacked right out of the gate pretty yeah. quickly. Uh, so, the hacking thing is a little bit of a loophole. Uh, anyway, there was another thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, how much is this going to be? Uh, 250 bucks. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. Yeah. I mean, uh, their consoles are always kind of a lot. Well, yeah, because they're... They're more boutique items. So like yeah. they're spec. Like you can get a clone console anywhere, but they're usually like fifty bucks, and they're really cheap. Like these are like for the super enthusiast crowd. These are like for the fucking people who had a Turbo Graphics back in the nineties. Yeah, you know because and have well, money now. Yeah, everyone who was like, "Well, I'm a Sega kid. I'm a Nintendo kid." You're in the back, and I'm a fucking Turbo Graphics <laughs> motherfucker. Also, Rondo of blood, bitches. Also, getting older consoles to work through HDMI is expensive. Which yes, we'll talk about later. Yes. Uh, I wanted to bring up before we move on too much. Uh, somebody in the chat said, uh, "Oh, Lord CD in the chat says, is are, are Pokemon cards gambling? Because we were talking about loot boxes. Yes. And I said yes. And then Edward Bova says, explain the reason why Pokemon <laughs> cards are gambling. Go ahead. So it's because people are buying these Pokemon cards right. to, uh, to, to get certain cards out of it, right? Right. And... Y- you have a, you know, a, 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 a random chance of getting the card that you want out of it. And then people take those and those cards are worth money now. Right. They could flip them for actual dollars. And that's how people play the Pokemon card game. They 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 want to unbox these cards and get the highest value cards out of it or the rarest cards out of it. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it's a form of gambling. Absolutely. And uh, recently... The Pokemon company got in a little bit of trouble because it was revealed that people who worked at the card manufacturing place were skimming the rarer cards off the top. (laughs) So all of the rarest cards were being taken. So people weren't able to get those. Uh, The Pokemon company denies this and says that it didn't affect like the rarity of the cards, but Mm. they have to say that. It 100% did. They could be sued for that they yeah. get in a lot of trouble for that so that sounds like gambling to me it, yeah. like if you're if, if someone is sitting there taking you know yeah. if someone's sitting there ruining the odds of a casino game yeah the casino is gonna get in a lot of trouble yeah you know yeah it, it's a shame because it, like it's not supposed to be gambling it's supposed to be a, a game for kids yeah. where you pit two animals against each other in life or death combat. Yeah. But, you know, this is what happens when adults get involved. Adults ruin everything. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun to, like, you know, unbox it and, and, yeah. and, and try to get something really expensive out of it. But so is yeah. gambling. Gambling is <laughs> also fun. Yeah. So. Lord Lord DC says I've been gambling since I've been six. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. Uh, somebody else in the chats asked if there's an update on the um, uh, Vita because yesterday I hacked the Vita J- Junior Moser. Uh, yes, uh, it worked. Everything worked. Yeah. I even got my Metal Gear Peace Walker, my legitimate Metal Gear Peace Walker, uh-huh. to work. To, I re-downloaded it okay. and my save file. Oh. Uh, but that was a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. That was the biggest pain in the ass was getting my save file from Peace Walker over to right. after I wiped the whole thing, which I guess I didn't really have to do. Uh, but everything works now. It's all good. Uh, I, I did not uh, download like any emulators onto it. I just did PSP and, and, uh, and, and the legitimate PSP game that I had. Right. Anyway, what else do we talk about? Uh, 3DS. There was a 3DS update. I put this in here. Okay. Uh, there's a 3DS update last night. Uh, I immediately went right to Oatmeal Dome's Twitter because he usually picks apart all of the software updates for Nintendo consoles. Uh-huh. He said version 11.17.0 slash 50 
was released for all regions. The patch notes only contain the usual stability line. Uh, but then uh, a bot, a Twitter account that is a bot, uh-huh. that I guess picks apart, automatically picks apart Nintendo updates, says that the update includes system settings update, eShop app update, internet browser was updated uh-huh. for US regions, 3DSs, the home menu was also updated. So some minor updates. I didn't notice anything any difference when i when i updated mine right uh big concern when these things happen is what's gonna happen with uh you know uh, hacked consoles right so i wanted to try that for myself and i couldn't update it failed so interesting that's a little bit of a problem and a big concern i was a little scared i was gonna break my console but it turns out it's because i had an older version of the hack which was fixed very easily i just had a replace two files yeah uh and then it updates and everything works everything's fine there you go uh you do need to do an update like this if you want to use any online features online features for the most part don't even work on a 3ds yeah. anymore but pokemon bank i'm pretty sure you need to do this update in order for pokemon bank to work yeah so you're gonna make sure that you have the most up-to-date version of luma 3ds which is again as easy as replacing two files the boot.firm file and the boot.3dsx files mm-hmm. on your micro SD card. And then it'll just be updated and, and work perfectly. Uh, I think I read somewhere that you need version 11 or 12 of Luma 3DS to do this update. I had version 10. Someone else tried to tell me that in the Discord for the 3DS hacks, they said, if your console is hacked, you can update. If your console is not hacked, do not update. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. I don't know why if your console is not hacked, you shouldn't update. I guess that's if you maybe want to hack it in the future, you might have an issue. So I'd imagine if you wanted to hack it, you would have already done so because it's very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Uh so if you're thinking about hacking your 3ds don't update it but i'm sure they'll have a fix later anyway it's because the hacking methods may have been patched out okay i think i i don't think it was but i understand the concern anyway that's the 3ds yes uh now i also put this in here uh when was this tweeted of course, it's uh, taking a hot minute. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to work with Pokemon Home? Yeah. Apparently, I didn't know they didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't know that either. I knew, well, I knew it was coming. I thought it had already come, yeah. but I guess not. Uh, this was May 18th. Okay, so it wasn't with the update. But yeah. uh, f- this is tweeted by the Pokemon Twitter account. From Pokemon Scarlet and Violet version 3.0.0 onward, players will be able to link Pokemon Home with Scarlet and, and Violet. So you'll be able to transfer your Pokemon uh, into and out of Scarlet and Violet now using okay. Pokemon Home, which is a nice thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming version 3.0.0 happened already. Uh, if it not seeing anything in this tweet i didn't see anything that pokemon got updated anywhere uh this guy on reddit said far too late once again why would i want to move my old decks into the scarlet and violet when i 100 percented the game many months ago that's a good point yeah i'm it you basically delayed a major feature for so long people people have moved on from this game already people already weren't happy with this game when oh, it i moved on so fast yeah Sly Cooper fan in the chat says 3.0.0 has not even happened yet. Wow. Uh, I They're doing this for longevity. Yeah. But it uh, yeah, it is far too late. They yeah. they they should have This should have happened at launch. This yeah. should have been a thing at launch. Yeah. Um Somebody else in, on Reddit says Pokemon Home is such a scam the fact that none of the games on Switch support every Pokemon ensures that you will need to pay an additional fee once in a while just to access your own Pokemon instead of just letting us store them locally. That's a good point, too. Because, yeah, that they stopped supporting every single Pokemon, which I get why, because there's so many of them. But also, 
Like, you've got the resources. Just make the Pokemon games massive big experiences. Yeah. Like they're not that complicated. Yeah. You know, they're 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 just turn based games. Mm-hmm. Like just we've seen what's possible on Switch hardware. Yeah. You are the biggest franchise in the world. You've got the money. Make the game good. Yeah. <laughs> this this game was not good. All right. Next we can finally talk about Eon Gaming's new cool device. Yes, Eon announces the XBHD, a plug-and-play HDMI adapter for the original Xbox. Eon Gaming, the company behind the HDMI adapters for the Nintendo GameCube and the N64 and friends of the show, uh, has officially announced the XBHD, its next adapter that is designed for the original Xbox. The XBHD is a plug-and-play adapter that allows you to easily play your original Xbox uh, on modern TVs. The XBHD includes two HDMI video outputs, a mini Toslink audio jack, and three LAN ports. The mini Toslink, according to Eon, uh, claims to deliver clean digital audio through headphones or speakers and even capture cards. The three LAN ports are the most interesting feature, as you can see in the image above. Uh, it allows for versatility in having LAN parties. Uh, with the original Xbox server shut down, including LAN ports uh, for the XBHD, it makes it easy to set up LAN parties and play games like Halo 2 with your friends and relive the early 2000s. Eon is aiming to release the XBHD June 20th, and it will cost $190, uh, sorry, $190, $30 more than the price of one GCHD Mark II or the Super 64 HDMI adapter. So... I they kind of teased this to me a while ago, so I yeah. knew that this was happening. Uh, I told them I want a demo of this working with four Xboxes because that's I'm not yeah. going to be able to do that, and that that's the most interesting part of this. Um, it is insane that it has two HDMI outputs. Yeah, that's I, for like this is for like a tournament. Yeah, you know, like uh, the the GCHD was already like a thing they were trying to get like working on for like melee tournaments yeah yeah so this is for like this is for halo tournaments yeah Yeah. uh and you know one of the hdmis is for spectators and stuff uh which i think is a really cool idea that is cool yeah it probably doesn't cost that much more to throw in another hdmi so why not uh the LAN capability sounds really cool yeah um the price is insane 180 dollars yeah that that's 190 dollars is crazy yeah that that's the thing that like (laughs) caught me i mean the GCHD is already a lot of money. Yeah. To be fair, though, so the Super 64 is very similar to the GCHD. The yeah. Super 64 is the HDMI adapter for Nintendo 64. Mm-hmm. I recently... So I was setting up uh, an N64 for somebody. Yeah. And I was going to... like the If you want to set up the ultimate N64, yeah. you could do the HDMI mod. The mod itself costs $150 without any work. Yeah. Like you have to do the work. Yeah. So... For the same price, you can get a Super 64. Yeah. So, I actually so I got them to you know hook that up. Yeah. Like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This makes a lot less sense because the original Xbox already supports like higher definition. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna say. The original Xbox um, can output up to 720p. Yeah. And component cables. At, well, 1080i. It, oh, can do I, I I looked it up. Okay, yeah. So I'd imagine most games are 720p. Yeah, yeah. Um, and component cables for the original Xbox are wild, widely available yeah. and really inexpensive. You know, well, you don't have for to, the aftermarket ones. Yeah. Well, even like original. Uh, the original was like eighty dollars. Really? I was looking it up. Yeah. Huh. But you don't need the original. Yeah, ones. you, you don't need. Either, you yeah. just need like good quality ones. Yeah. So, uh, if you could just get those and. You can hook them up to any modern TV, and they look fine. And component uh, to HDMI adapters are not expensive. Yeah. So for a, if you just want to hook up an original Xbox to a modern TV, there is a lot less expensive ways to do it. Part of it is the 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 limited lag. Yeah. But uh, again, I feel like that shouldn't be too hard because you're taking component signal and making it hd like the, it, it's already hd right it's already there you're not right. upscaling or anything this is i feel like this product in particular 
Um, I mean, we we haven't seen it. We haven't played with it. Right. You know, we haven't tested it out yet. Um, but just from like the initial look of it, this is definitely geared more towards people who play like Halo Two or Forza One, yeah, of course, competitively all the time. Mm-hmm. Like this, this is not for somebody who just wants to hook up their Xbox to their TV because there is a million ways to do that. I would argue that the GCHD and even the Super 64, those are for everybody. Yeah. Because those are the easiest ways to just get those things hooked up to modern televisions. Yeah. This is definitely more for conventions and, you know, esports teams that still only play Halo 2 and things like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we also should point out the LAN stuff. Like, like yeah. that is just a network switch. Yeah. I have a... Twenty dollar one plugged in on this desk, you know, yeah. like, and that is even overkill for an Xbox, not yeah. twenty dollar one. But there's a lot of cables and stuff yeah. going on. Uh, this just plugs right in. So this is you're right. This is a convenience thing for people who do lands all the time because you yeah. just need one of these, mm-hmm. and then everyone else can work off of their own uh, uh, component hookup. Yeah. You know, you just need one of these for what for the for the main console, and that could be the spectator console. And then all of the other ones uh, can use the friggin', uh, you know, the, the just a regular component. Yeah. And they don't need uh, 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 a network switch because they could just plug into this one. Yeah. So this is specifically just for tournaments. This is not for you to use at home. Yeah. yeah. I will say, though, like all the stuff they're packing into this little box, like that's an that's impressive feat of engineering because you got... Uh, an HDMI converter, you have a uh, HDMI splitter, you have a, a network switch in there, you know, all in this, like something that's like this big. So yeah. that's, that's very impressive. And and I'd imagine the, the cost is so high because they're not going to sell a lot of these because yeah. it, it's Xbox. Like there's not a lot of demand for Xbox, uh, yeah. HDMI, uh, Xbox stuff, you yeah. know? Uh, I didn't know they launched this. I knew it was coming like very soon. Yeah. Uh, I got word of it because I saw Retro Tink on Twitter, quote tweeted it, and was shitting all over it. Yeah. And it's like, all right, obviously you're going to do that. You're Retro Tink and yeah. you have a competitor. <laughs> but I saw a lot of people replying to the price and they were very upset because yeah. uh, That's, there are a yeah. lot of cheaper alternatives, Yeah, uh, especially for Xbox. If all you want to do is upscale, yeah, Retro Tink is not a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, f- but again, like if you have, like even if you have like an Xbox One or a Series X that can play the games you want to play, yeah, you don't need this. Like Crimson Skies works on X on Xbox One and Series X, and it supports LAN support. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, this, this is, is this is for LAN enthusiasts. This is a yeah. very specific market that yeah. like not everyone is going to be a part of, and that's okay. And that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm planning on getting like a demo of this. I don't like necessarily need this because I don't even have an original. Yeah, Xbox. we never had an original Xbox. So I want to uh, next time they do like an actual demo of it. They might have one at too many games. So and that's very soon. Actually. Yeah, that's in like a month. So uh, yeah, I want to see a demo of it. Maybe I'll make yeah. a YouTube short out of it or something. Um, but yeah, I, I again, it's not something we need. Yeah, you know. I kind of don't want an original Xbox because it's so big, and where am I going to put it? Exactly. I've thought. I've, I've honestly thought about it, but like any game I would want to play on it, like I can play on Xbox One or even the Xbox 360 because that has supports more games. But like, no, we were GameCube kids, we were PS2 kids. Yeah, you know, all the games we would want to play are over there. Original Xbox didn't have much great stuff. And Halo, it had. I was thinking about this the other day. It had a lot more first party games than we thought. And a lot more exclusives than like they definitely do now, mm-hmm. but you know it's such it's so weird because the original Xbox only sold like two million units more than the GameCube, and so it's like between twenty four and twenty six million units. But nobody considers the original Xbox a failure. Everyone considers the GameCube a failure, mm-hmm. and yet, y- yeah, and here we are. GameCube you know. had so many better games it did <laughs> it did but it had like this you know gamecube still had like the kitty reputation xbox yeah. was like 
for adults, like yeah. just like the PS2, and they had all the same games. So, um, yeah. Remember, uh, I took to uh, what did I take? I took uh, Tears of the Kingdom and threw it in the trash because we're done talking about no. it. <laughs> I took uh, Twilight Princess from our parents' house. Yes, uh, I hooked up the 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 Wii on Sunday. Uh, I was getting ready to stream it, and then I realized I didn't have a nunchuck. Oh, I gotta get a nunchuck. Anyway, uh, next news. Yes, Pac Man ninety nine gone. Throw yep. it in the trash. <laughs> if you if you downloaded it to your Switch, just throw your Switch in the trash and buy a yeah. new one. Because Pac Man ninety nine, the battle royale spin on the classic Pac Man gameplay that's available through Switch Online, will shut down this October. Mm. Publisher Bandai Namco announced on Tuesday. Uh, that's when online services for the ninety nine player game will go offline. But Switch owners who paid for the game's DLC. Uh, Pac-Man 99 Deluxe Pack or Mode Unlocked uh, will still be able to play it offline against the CPU and in other modes. News of Pac-Man 99's closure comes two years after the Battle Royale game was released on Switch as an incentive to subscribe to Switch Online. Pac-Man 99 was developed by Akira, uh, the same studio behind another Battle Royale spin on a classic game, Tetris 99. Uh, Publisher Bandai Namco did not provide a reason for the game's closure. Here's how the closure of Pac-Man 99 will roll out. On August 8th, uh, paid custom theme sales will be discontinued. On September 8th, uh, sales of Pac-Man 99 Deluxe and and uh, Mode Unlocked will be discontinued. And on October 8th, the discontinuation of online services for the main game and distribution of the main game and free custom themes. After October 8th, Pac-Man 99 players who purchased the, the digital pack or unlock mode will be able to play against CPU uh, battle mode will be able to play cpu battle mode blind time attack and score attack in offline mode only uh that's kind of a long time so yeah. they, they gave you plenty of time to play your pac-man 99 yeah uh but yeah here's nintendo again getting rid of this is the live service world that we live in well this is bandai namco specifically yeah but this it. is nintendo's fault yeah because it's on their nintendo switch online subscription yeah and, and it's following in the footsteps of Tetris 99 and, and, and well, Mario Tetris 99, 35. Tetris 99 is still available, Yes, isn't it? Tetris 99 is still available. Yeah. Mario 35 is, is on the a, one yeah, that they got rid of. Yeah. So you just, I'm upset. I should have played more Mario 35. Yeah. Pac-Man 99 was fun. Yeah, it was good a little bit I played of it. Uh, it's only Tetris 99 is the best version of this concept, yeah. but... Yeah. I mean, I loved Mario 35. I wish that they did some things a little differently, but... Uh, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't keep that going in some capacity. I'd love to see a new version of that. I want yeah. I just want Mario Royale, but like Nintendo to make it. Yeah. Because that is such a good idea. It works so well. Uh crazy how these games are meant to promote Nintendo Switch Online and they've shut down two of them so far. Yeah. I know. It's ridiculous. And they're great ideas. Yeah. Uh, they should just do an arcade, like a ninety nine arcade. Yeah, and, and have you, you go into the app and then you pick Tetris, uh, Pac Man, Mario. Yeah, you know. I mean, I guess they realize that players aren't playing it enough to warrant like keeping the servers alive. You know, they need at least a hundred people playing this game. Yeah, I guess they feel like it's like an event. Like, like, yeah. like for this year we have Pac Man ninety nine. For next yeah. year we're gonna have Galaga ninety nine. And like, yeah. who gives a shit? Uh, Pong ninety nine. Imagine. But you all play at the same time. I mean, Galaga 99 would be pretty sweet. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> How would you do that? Uh, One of the ships. Every so often, one of the ships that comes in is like an, uh, some, a supplier. Ah, uh, okay. okay. <coughs> oh. All right. Uh, hey, Caleb Fox. Thanks for the 11 months. I'm joining late, so maybe this was talked about earlier. But Death Stranding is currently free on Epic again. I did not know that. I did not know that That either. is pretty cool. Epic. Also, I just switched back to the Store video feed, games. and the close-up was of me picking my nose. All right. So there you go. <laughs> the trick is when you're done talking, you got to wait like 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, free games. Honkai Impact 3rd. 3rd. <laughs> Death Stranding. Free now. There you go. And also a mystery game. Ooh, Ooh. It unlocks in one day in 13 hours. That's cool. Uh, Death Stranding is another game that I want to play in my backlog, but it's yeah. pretty low in my backlog. 
I gotta do uh what do I got? I got Resident Evil Four. Mm-hmm. Here's another game that I wanted to. Oh, I wanted I want to do Peace Walker. I want to get through Peace Walker. Yeah. I'm so close to the end, and I've gotten this far in both the Xbox 360 version and yeah. the and the uh, Vita version, the PSP on Vita version. Yeah. Uh, I played I played through it twice and stopped at the same part, but I'm like towards the end, so right. I want to finally get that done. But I did start playing it, and it is it is weird yeah. because on the Vita, you well on the PSP. The camera controls, the right stick, is the face buttons. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think there's a setting to make it the analog stick, but it's, it thinks that you're using face buttons. Yeah. So it's it's bizarre. I think the Xbox 360 version might be the best version. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should finish it on that. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, we got GameStop drama yes an entire gamestop store quits on tears of the kingdom release day hell yeah brother uh nowadays it's not uncommon to hear of an entire gamestop store quitting uh on mass uh, as working conditions at the video game retailer continue to deteriorate it's rarer to hear of employees resigning the day the biggest game of the year launches that's apparently what happened at one michigan store the day zelda tears of the kingdom came out Unfortunately, due to poor working conditions, the staff of the Brighton GameStop have decided to resign effective immediately, a note reportedly posted outside the store read. Management overworks, underpays, and underappreciates its frontline workers, sets unrealistic expectations, and constantly threatens termination for any employee that cannot exceed them. A photo of the note was posted on Facebook by a customer named Chris Cannerhart. Uh, and subsequently reported by local media after a tweet by gaming uh, deals out account Nintendo went viral. Uh, Canterheart uh, told Kotaku he was visiting the store on May 12th, the day Tears of the Kingdom launch, to hunt for some collectibles. I got there right before they opened and saw the sign. He said, "While I was there, five people I stopped by to uh, sorry. While I was there, five people stopped by to pick up the, the, their pre-ordered Zelda." Ooh, imagine pre-ordering the game. Yeah. And the GameStop the whole stores quit. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, GameStop did not immediately respond to requests for comment. I want to know what happened to these employees. Uh, f- yeah, I don't think... Tears of the Kingdom was a huge day for the alien retailer. Uh, f- there were lines around the block at some places and several current employees told Kotaku they were inundated with in-store purchases and online orders. Uh, I will say this is the biggest launch for a game that I've seen in years. Not uh, even the recent Pokemon games have been this huge for us. One current employee said some stores have some stores had hundreds of copies and still had to turn customers away who didn't pre-order the game. Uh, many stores held midnight launches, and Canterheart said he heard from other customers that the Brighton location was one of them. Oh, okay. with diehard fans able to get their copies of the game at night the night before release. It's not clear if the staff was planning to quit the next day ahead of time. Or the midnight launch was something that uh, put them over the edge. A new employee at the Brighton location declined to comment about the situation, but told Kotaku that the store eventually reopened on Tears of the Kingdom launch day within three hours of the resignations. Oh. Despite the meme stock continuing to defy all logic and it's a first profitable quarter in years, GameStop employees have continued to report high turnover, lack of meaningful pay raises, and more intense pressure than ever to hit unrealistic sales metrics. As a result... Even some longtime staff have gotten too fed up with the continued work there, uh, and occasionally entire stores have been forced to temporarily shut down amid staff shortages. Sukasa, thank you for the 19 months. They say, this store is near me. You gotta go. Yeah. And you gotta ask what happened to Yeah, and then uh, report back yes. next week, because we need to know. We need to know. Yeah. You, this... you have, it's your duty. Yeah, I mean, like, the stones on these people to like quit on tears of the kingdom day. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, I mean, what better day? Yeah. But it's okay. So they, they reopened three, three hours later after they closed. Yeah. You, you know, that's the manager like calling people frantically. Like, why aren't you showing up? Why aren't you showing up? And then him having to work the whole day himself. Yeah. That sounds like, uh, it sounds like, yeah, maybe they walked out and the manager wasn't in on it. Like yeah. I see like the Starbucks closures that happen all the time yeah. when, when they like protest. Uh, it seems like it's unanimously the whole store, including yeah. the manager. And if they reopen, I mean, it could also be like the district manager hearing about it and then running over there. Probably. That's what I meant. Like, yeah. cause like, there's always like the one, like, I don't want to say the corporate guy, but like 
the the guy who like oversees the store but never goes to the store but yeah. always that's like the that's the district yeah. manager guy yeah who does fuck all yeah and, until something like this happens i got yelled at by the district manager one time yeah because uh the night before there were like bad sales and i didn't work there i didn't give a yeah. shit i wasn't there that night i didn't give a shit but then the the day that i got yelled at I got yelled at because the computers just stopped working. Yeah. Like, the, like the network just stopped. And uh, at the time, I think it was Pokemon Sun and Moon was out. Yeah. And um, I just couldn't sell. I couldn't sell. Half of the games in the inventory just wouldn't ring up. Right. So, And it was a slow store anyway. So people would come in and I'd be like, it's not scanning. I can't sell you Pokemon. Yeah. So- sorry. And they'd be like, oh, that's, that's a shame. Okay, bye. And then they'd leave. And then I was frantically trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And then the district manager called me and he's like, dude, you should have closed the store. What the fuck, man? He's like, also, there were bad sales yesterday. What's that all about? And I was like, I I don't know. I wasn't (laughs) here. I don't know. I've been trying to ask what I'm supposed to do. Now you're telling me and now you're yelling at me. What the fuck? (laughs) Anyway, fuck those guys. Um, Also, terrible art from Kotaku here. Yeah. It's just a picture of a GameStop store's door with a random png of a tears of the kingdom car well i mean on top you know that's the main reason why everybody hates kotaku is their bad artwork (laughs) yes that's the only reason people hate that website (laughs) no other reason at all um so yeah good good for gamestop yeah good good for this one bright gamestop yeah all right i put this pretty low but i know it's a big deal to you yeah Mortal Kombat! Beep, 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 beep. Uh, I can yell here because I don't have kids to wake up. Mortal yeah. Kombat 12 has been revealed as Mortal Kombat 1. It's a wow. stupid name. <laughs> Developer NetherRealm has officially revealed Mortal Kombat 1, the next chapter in its long-running fighting game series, which will release in September. It takes... Uh, It takes on the name rather than the expected Mortal Kombat 12 name because, as previously hinted at, Mortal Kombat 1 is sort of a reboot of the series and takes place in a new era uh, established by Liu Kang after he ascended to godhood in 2019's Mortal Kombat 11. He did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was was a weird weird game. (laughs) Uh, unlike previous games, Mortal Kombat 1, uh, sorry, like previous games, Mortal Kombat 1 will have a story mode, a unique roster of characters, and a new fighting system. You can see more in the trailer below. Uh, while this new entry has plenty of changes and new ideas, one thing that hasn't changed is the uh, trademark ultra violence that the series is known for. Like the previous entries in the series, Mortal Kombat is going all in on gore, blood, and fatalities. Uh, one of the new systems being teased uh, for the game are cameo fighters which will allow you to call in assists from a fighter on the roster. Cameo fighters are unique. Ro- Sorry. Cameo fighters are a unique roster of partner characters to assist, to assist you during matches. And these characters are chosen separately from the main roster of fighters. As for the Mortal Kombat one roster, nether realm has confirmed Liu Kang, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Raiden, Kung Lao, Katana, Melina, Shang Tsung, Johnny Cage, and many others. It's worth noting that Shang Tsung will be available as a pre-order bonus. Oh, Dumb. my fucking God. And Johnny Cage will have access to a Jean-Claude Van Damme skin through the Combat Pack DLC. Did they show him? I don't think uh, they they sh- did not show, show him. him. They yeah. just announced it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He is what's known as a cameo fighter who can assist players during a match. For multiplayer, NetherRealm has confirmed that there will be a rollback netcode and players uh, who pre-order the game for console can take part in a beta this August. Mortal Kombat 1 will launch on September 19th for PC, Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S, uh, with early access kicking off September 14th, depending on which version of the game you own. The base game will be $70, even on Switch, um, and will also be available as a $110 premium edition and a $250 collector's edition. That's collector with a K. Now, does that, I think that makes this the second. This is officially the second Switch game to cost $70. Right. Interesting. Uh, it is also unknown at this point if the Switch version will be cloud-based or not. Mortal Kombat 11 was on Switch. It was not cloud-based. It looked like butt, but it played very well. Uh, I'm glad that they put some effort into it yes. like to, to make it run good on, on, on Switch at, or to run on Switch at all. Yeah. Day one DLC, really dumb. Yeah. Uh, and does that mean that you can't play as Johnny Cage? No. Uh, it sounds like Johnny Cage is going to be a cameo fighter. Yeah. So he's just going to be an assist, 
which is kind of lame. Because it says the roster includes Johnny Cage, yeah. and then also he is a cameo fighter. Yeah. So I don't. So I don't know. I'm sure we'll know more about that as the we get closer to release day. Also, it was revealed that this game is going to be over 100 gigabytes. Yes. It is a fighting game. It is a fighting game. Yeah. That means not a lot to the levels, not a lot to the characters. Yeah. But so over I mean, 100 gigabytes. I will say, like, the Mortal Kombat games have been very impressive with, like, the detail of, like, that they put into the level mm-hmm. design. And also the facial animation in the most recent games is, like, some of the best in the entire industry. Mm-hmm. Still not 100, 100 gigabyte worth. <laughs> yeah. Uh it's coming out September 19th with yeah. early access the 14th. Yeah. Um also okay so this is a continuation and a reboot. Yeah. So here's the thing. So Mortal Kombat 11, spoiler alert for Mortal Kombat 11 if you haven't played it yet. Mortal Kombat 11, Liu Kang ascends into godhood. He becomes the fire god Liu Kang. And because his the main opponent in Mortal Kombat 11 was a time sorceress. When you beat her, you get time manipulation power. So you go back in time to reset the whole timeline. Oh. The plot of Mortal Kombat 9, which came out in 2011, was that Raiden sends a message back in time to the start of the original Mortal Kombat game and and essentially resets the timeline from there. So, so it's is, the same. It's, this a, is this, it, it's it, the same. It's basically the same idea of going back in time and resetting the Mortal Kombat timeline from the beginning. So it's another reboot. Yes. This is not the first time they've. This is rebooted. not the first time. But they've it's done like it. a canonical reboot. Yeah. So was the other one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Uh. I mean, it looks like a good fighting game. I mean, they, I, I never played 11, but what was it? Was last one 11? Last one was 11, yeah. That looked very good. It was a good fighting game. I played game, for yes. like two seconds. Yeah, no, it, it was looked a, good. They're very good fighting games, the Mortal Kombat games, especially like the last three, 20, the 2011 version, Mortal Kombat X and Mortal Kombat 11. They're very good. Uh, and I'm assuming this is going to be just as good, if not better. Yeah. It's just, you know, I feel like the story, they put so much into these stories and I feel like they're kind of losing the plot from it. You know, hopefully this reboot will like be a clean slate yeah. for them, even though it's the same fucking plot as Mortal Kombat 2011. Um, I am interested to see like what they do with all the gore and violence. Yeah, I don't love it. Like, like uh, half of this trailer was just like really uh, like brutal gore. Yeah, so and I, I wasn't. I, I like I don't need that. Like I, well, I'm not playing. I, I wouldn't be playing this for gore. But I guess there is a lot of people that do play it for that. I, I mean, guess. we've seen uh, time and again from like different versions. You know, Mortal Kombat is not Mortal Kombat without the excessive violence, mm-hmm. and I understand that. But especially in Mortal Kombat 11, it got to a point where, like, everything was excessive violence. Yeah. Things that would have normally been a fatality in older games were just a transitional move in Mortal Kombat 11. And the fatalities that they did put in were so over the top and so violent, so outlandish. Like, there was no real impact to them. There was no weight to them. So I'm kind of hoping that, like, Honestly, I kind of hope they scale it back. You know, obviously make it violent, make it bloody, but save the the truly gruesome stuff for fatalities. Yeah. You know, don't like waste a transitional move or like an x-ray move or a, or like, you know, a special move on something that is like excessively gory. Yeah. Uh I, I I'm interested in it as a uh, just technically as a fighting game. Yeah. Also, the supposedly their netcode has been really good for yeah. the past couple of games. Yeah. It's some of the best in fighting games because fighting games have issues with uh with online capabilities. Yeah. And supposedly people were holding Mortal Kombat, I think eleven, as like a standard yeah. that other fighting games should should live up to. I believe they confirmed it'll use rollback rollback net code. Yeah, that's the big deal. But I think yeah. they used like a like a hybrid of it. Yeah. In the last one, which was like how it should be. Like yeah. like like I don't think roll I think that fighting game people love to hold rollback as like the standard, but I think that there needs to be some sort of like a like, yeah. like a hybrid version 
of rollback versus I think it's like predictive. Yeah. I don't know the, the exact technical term. Uh, but that's what makes online games like the 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 most seamless is when it, it accurately predicts what you're trying to do if the 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 network is unstable. Yeah. And that's what makes uh, uh Smash Brothers so bad is yeah. that is that instead of predicting what you're trying to do and keeping things stable it shuts the whole game down uh, and should, waits for you to I got to see if I can find it cuz I I did see somewhere that Sakurai basically admitted that Smash yes. Brothers online sucks. I was what the next thing I was going to say is apparently Sakurai thinks that you shouldn't play Smash Brothers online and that it should be a couch co-op game right and that's why he didn't give a fuck about the yeah. online. <laughs> but that's because he's old and he doesn't realize that right. now these days people want to play games online yeah. kids these days <laughs> when they play games they go you go home to your house i'm going home yeah. to my house and we'll play online all right, here's his quote. I don't think online play and Smash Brothers are very good fit for each other. Uh, one of the best parts of Smash Brothers is how players ca- can become champions among their friends, but being subjected to online competition can cause people to lose confidence, which isn't great. How is that any different from losing confidence in real life? Yeah, no, they just don't realize. These people don't realize. They just have like Nintendo, like Nintendo in general, like always have weird philosophies on like gaming. Yeah, they're always like 10 steps behind. Yeah. All right. Uh, where are we? Will, what are your thoughts on Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks? That was a good game. That was a surprisingly very good game. I I think I, I think we have it. It's a PS2 game. I think oh. I remember getting it. That was like the weird time where like we weren't playing Mortal Kombat games because they were kind of shitty. Um, but that one was very good. Yeah. The first game we played on N64 was Mortal Kombat 4. Was it four or was it trilogy? I thought they were the same. No. No. Mortal Kombat trilogy was like this weird like amalgamation of the first three games, but as Mortal Kombat 3. Um it was the amalgamation of the first three games in the style of Mortal Kombat 3, and then Mortal Kombat 4 was the 3D game. I thought it was 3D. I thought I think what we played was 3D. Okay. Well, wasn't it just called Mortal Kombat 64 though? No. There's Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Mortal Kombat 4. I remember the logo for Trilogy. Yeah. So it might have been that. I but think I it, remember it being 3D. Because, like, Trilogy was out first, obviously. Mm-hmm. Oh, then it was probably Trilogy yeah. then. Because we got, we got the system and then we never got, we didn't get a game for it. Yeah. So we went to Blockbuster and got Mortal Kombat. Because well, we, we like Mortal Kombat. We big Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. Thing. Anyway, next news, we got Xbox games are now added to GeForce. Uh, We are thrilled to share that starting today, May 18th, NVIDIA GeForce Now Cloud Gaming members in the UK, the US, the European Union, and around the world can stream Gears 5, and on May 25th, we'll be able to uh, enjoy fan favorites Deathloop, Grounded, and Peniment. This is just the beginning... This is the beginning stage of our forward-thinking 10-year partnership with NVIDIA to make PC games from Xbox Game Studio and Bethesda available to GeForce Now members. Together, we, we're accelerating access to players around the globe by letting them choose how and when to play. And we're showing the UK that we're letting other cloud gaming services have our games. Please let us buy Activision. Uh, that might have been added by me. So yeah, uh, Microsoft is making good on their word. They're adding their own games to other cloud services, starting with uh, NVIDIA GeForce Now. Um, it, immediately, they're getting Gears 5, and coming in the next few days, they're getting Deathloop, Grounded, and Peniment. Yeah, it, it literally made 25th, so in two yeah. days. Yeah. Uh, that's a big deal. I don't know anybody who plays games on NVIDIA GeForce Now. I It's one of those things, it, it's like Nickelback. I know there's a fan base, <laughs> but I never met anybody who would admit to being a fan. All right, real quick, GTA 6. Coming out as soon as next year? Doubt it. Doubt it. Uh, crazy if they yeah. just drop it. Uh, in, a pre- in a press release issued alongside its yearly earnings report, Take-Two shared projections for the coming years, including a massive projection for fiscal year 2025 and 2026. For context, for context, fiscal year 2025 will begin in April of 2024. Quote, Looking ahead, fiscal 2025 is a highly anticipated year for the company. For the last several years, we've been preparing our business uh, to release an incredibly robust pipeline of projects that uh, we believe will take our company to even greater levels of success. In fiscal 2025, 
We expect to enter this new era by launching several groundbreaking titles that we believe will set a new standard in our industry and enable us to achieve over $8 billion in net booking and over a billion dollars in adjusted unrestricted operating cash flow. We expect to sustain this momentum by delivering even higher levels of operating success in fiscal 2026 and beyond. Now, while take two doesn't explicitly say uh, Grand Theft Auto, it's hard to imagine any other franchise doing this work for them. Uh, for one, take two's net booking this past fiscal year was $5.3 billion, a record annual high. Notably, this record was reached thanks to its contributions of Zynga, which it acquired last year. Prior to this, Take-Two's regular annual net bookings were looking roughly around $3 billion and steadily rising. It took, uh, it took the acquisition of a major mobile developer to see them leap over a billion dollars in this space of a single year. So to achieve a goal of $8 billion, uh, Take Two would need to make significant acquisitions, or release nearly double the amount of gaming of games it historically has, or release at least one absolute behemoth of a game. Notably, Take Two expects to do even better in its taking, um, in it sorry, in, expects to do even better in its takings the following year. Something that seems impossible without something like GTA Online, built on the foundations of a brand new GTA game to propel its revenue sky high. So. This to me sounds like it will launch at the beginning of 2025. Yeah. That sounds reasonable to me for this to be accurate. Yeah. Because the fiscal year will still be wait. Yeah. Their fiscal year starts in April. Yes. Then it's very likely that April 2025 before April 2025. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. Before April 2025. Right. Uh it'll launch, but it'll still count as the 2025 fiscal year. Yeah. 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 That 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 sounds that sounds most accurate to me. Right. Um well, so that means we'll probably hear about it next year for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Or even soon this year maybe or like towards the end of this year maybe. I feel like if it's going to come out in 2025, we're not going to hear about it until mid 2024 i think we'd get a uh teaser soon like, yeah. like a like a like a title screen or something yeah but yeah we know that they're working on this yeah everybody knows they're working on it i think it you know people are just really want to know when the fuck gta 6 is coming out yeah i think i remember once telling my wife's cousin's kids because they were asking me when gta 6 is coming out after gta 5 came out and i said like oh you know they work on those games for years by the time gta 6 actually comes out you guys will probably be legal enough to buy the game yourself because they were under 18 now they're all over 18 <laughs> so so you were right yes and once again hashtag what was right uh last news that is only here to appease our father yes uh las vegas neighborhood is naming their streets after pokemon characters wow yes uh where is it uh, imagine writing a letter to somebody or uh, doing some sh online shopping or filling out a form and getting to write your street name. That is the name of a Pokemon for new residents of Serenity place, a neighborhood in Henderson, Nevada. That dream will be a reality. Every street in this new development uh, from Harmony Homes will be named after Pokemon. Streets names include famous Gen 1 pocket monsters like Jigglypuff, Squirtle, Snorlax, Charmander and Charizard. Construction has been booming in the Las Vegas Valley, leading to a unique challenge of coming up with names for new streets. It's really, really hard to name streets in this town, uh, says Andrea Miller, a construction manager at Harmony Homes, LLC. Um, in order to create new street names, a developer must figure out a number, figure out the number of streets and then submit double that number of names so that they may pass jurisdiction to determine whether they whether they've been used already. Uh, so, yeah, and the street signs are already there. Apparently, Mil Miller's 11-year-old and 14-year-old sons, who are obsessed with Pokemon, gave her the idea. Um, and luckily, there are tons of Pokemon to choose from. P uh, Polygon has been able to find the development on Google Maps um, and finding images of Snorlax Lane and, Jig and Squirtle Lane. Jigglypuff Place was there on the map, but sadly, there was no Street View images of it. As yeah, of I'm yet. looking right now. <laughs> uh, Jigglypuff Place is the main thoroughfare of this new development because it's their it's their kids' favorite Pokemon. When I hear Jigglypuff, I giggle. Miller told KLAS Eight News. Now, um, when you're coming home from work and you had a bad day and you have to turn off the Jigglypuff Lane, that will make you smile. Okay, J okay. Jigglypuff Place is on the 
the yes. Google Maps. I have I have found it. Yes. Um, I'm assuming you can't actually go here. It's, 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 it's under development. Yeah, it's under development. It's going to be like, it's a residential area. So like they expect people to live here. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a whole res- residential like like the development. So yeah. So uh, yeah, it'll probably be like closed off or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting. Uh, who dis says buying property on Victory Road, LOL. That's they should, that would have <laughs> made so much yeah. more sense. The thing is, it's Las Vegas. There's probably already a Victory Road. That is no. true. That is true. All right, we're doing this. Quit All right. Week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Oh, it's a TikTok of the week. You fooled yeah, me. Yeah, I fooled you. It's a TikTok. Oh. Check this out, though. You're going to love this one. Okay. It's a remix. <laughs> and then it's just that over. And over uh, it's the, that is... The best. I thought I thought you liked that. I do. I enjoy. I enjoy me some disturbed. Uh, all right. Now we're gonna talk to you guys. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash podcast. Yes, we have our good buddy Fred pulling the comments. Yes. Uh, from last week's Wolf Den podcast on the YouTube comments, we got J- Judo Techie who says, saying Breath of the Wild split the fan base as much as Toon Link might be most wa- the most wild take I've ever heard from a reviewer. That was yeah. talking about the guy who gave Tears of the Kingdom the lowest rating on Metacritic. Yeah. Uh, and I, I said that on the show. Like That's a wild thing to say because like, yeah. nobody said anything bad about Tears of the you Kingdom. You know, we had a problem with Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Breath of the Wild, rather. Yeah. 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 You know, we were there. We lived the, the Wind Waker blowback and like all the controversy yeah. surrounding it. And then people played the game and was like, oh, this is good. Yeah. AJ Steers says, are game devs really leaving the Switch behind or are they building for an undisclosed Switch 2 that releases this winter? Uh, both. Yeah. I mean, like we said, Mortal Kombat 1 is coming out on Switch. Yeah. Not Switch 2, not Switch Pro, not Switch Next, not New Switch. It said Switch. Yeah. And Notably, that's September, though. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like if there was going to be an, a new Switch this year, they would hold off on saying it's coming to Switch. I don't know because I, I, it's probably been in development for a really long time. Yeah. And, uh, I mean,. Nintendo's got to be, they got something because they got no games. Yeah. And I mean, Harry Potter postponed it. True. I think that game just will not be able to run on Switch. Yeah. And they, they might be waiting for a Switch too. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 Mortal Kombat, I think that they have all of the technology to make it work because right. they've done it before already. Well, again, we don't know if it's going to be a cloud game or not. True. That's yeah. a good point. Eric C says, I got to be honest, I'm taking uh, Tony Hawk 2 over literally every game. Yeah. That was us saying that Tony Hawk 2 might be one of the greatest games of all time. Well, or might be the greatest <laughs> game of all time. I mean, everybody loves it. Everybody loves it. Zeros Ones says, you guys are my favorite podcast, but I absolutely cannot believe you prefer Twin Snakes over Metal Gear Solid 1. It's the better version. Here, here's the thing. Here's here's what the two reasons why everybody prefers. Everybody says that the original is better than Twin Snakes. Okay. These are the two reasons. Okay. One is because they added all the mechanics from Metal Gear Solid Two into Metal Gear Solid One. And now I understand that does kind of break the game to a certain extent because you couldn't hang, um, you couldn't like shimmy in the uh, Metal Gear Solid One, but you can in Two, and that sort of like makes escape easier in certain parts. Um, also. Uh, first person shooting was not in the original Metal Gear Solid, and that, that breaks does Otacon, the first fight. Yes. Ocelot, Ocelot. It does break the first fight with Ocelot. It does break a lot of, um, but you don't have to use them. You can still technically play the game the original way. It's just there if you want some help. There's nothing wrong with making the game a little easier. Yes, yes. The second reason why people don't like um, Twit Snakes over the original is the redone cutscenes. Because they're a lot more flashy, they're a lot more spectacular, they're a lot more action packed, the, and they're fucking cool for the it. The dialogue is a lot more hammy. It's a lot more campy than the original one, but that makes the game. It's so good. It's so good. And they only got more hammy after. Yeah. That. So it's like, like, it's perfect. Like I've seen like original Metal Gear Solid Liquid Snake, and he's good. 
but Twin Snakes Liquid Snake is a revelation. Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's so, so good. good. Yeah. Oh my god. So um also, Victor Xanthi says, Zelda games appeal to Nintendo fans, but I do not think Zelda appeals to general audiences. I don't think there's enough demand for a Zelda movie. I think you're insane because of what's happening with the sales of Tears of yeah, the Kingdom. Yeah, Tears of the Kingdom sold better than Hogwarts Legacy. And Hogwarts Legacy has the Harry Potter IP, which is still somehow really big. And that came out on multiple systems. Tears of the Kingdom came out on one system yeah. and like within less time sold more than it. Yeah, I think that there's a... We're in a time now where video games aren't a niche thing anymore. Yeah. And Zelda is one of the biggest games. Yeah. So it's it's got a wide appeal. I, like, I think, you know, certainly Mario is bigger, but I don't yeah. think you can deny the level of like interest in zelda yeah you know it is it is huge also if the characters are uh already have the success in a niche like yeah i i said video games aren't really a niche but if you want to consider them a niche if zelda is showing success within that niche it could translate to something else that's what happened with comic books they brought it into movies and yeah. found success with certain ones of them there and yeah. that that's why what they've been trying to do with video games for so long Anyway, Caesar Morales says, uh, I have never listened to this podcast, so I gave it a chance. I chose this episode to start with, and I only made it three minutes into the podcast. That dude really said, I have never played Breath of the Wild, and I don't. Who? Who said that? I keep reading. <laughs> I have never played Breath of the Wild, and I don't think I'll get around to play this one. Done. What a joke of a host. So that's you. That's me, but, but that's did, not what I said. You did play I Breath said, of the I Wild. Said, yeah, I said I have played Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I didn't finish Breath of the Wild. Right. And I don't think I'll get around to play Tears of the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. That's not a knock on Tears of the Kingdom. That's just me and my point in my, in my life right now. I don't think I'm going to get to it. Yeah. But I have explicitly talked about... Many, maybe if you picked a different episode, buddy. <laughs> maybe if you've been around for a little bit longer. But I have played uh, Breath of the Wild. I just haven't finished it. Many people have not finished Breath of the Wild. It's a big yeah, fucking game. Like, There's a lot to do. It took me five years to beat Yeah. And so. I had I had a, a decent amount of time in that game. This yeah. guy, Listen, I want to finish Tears of the Kingdom, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, I don't, I like, I, I got to do this for how many more hours? Yeah. Like, it's all, it's an amazing game. Right. But, uh. I got other games to play, yeah. you know, like I'm, yeah. I'm at that point now where I'm like, just wrap it up. <laughs> like video games are a commitment already. Yeah. And like the bigger a commitment you make, the more intimidating that is for me. <laughs> I'm like 20 hours into the yeah. game and I'm like, I'm on the second guy, yeah. you know, out of four guys. So like, get me out of here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now we're in the chat real quick, real quick. Uh, I'm getting close to finishing it. It's incredible for sure, says Holy Lips. Mm -hmm. uh, Griffinix says, I'm 25 hours into Breath of the Wild. Oh, God. Sui Kagura says, I think a lot of people who buy Tears of the Kingdom do not play it for long or definitely never complete it. Same with, same as Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes It's just such a long game. I mean, if you look at like completion metrics, a majority of people do not finish the video games that they buy. You know, I said that once, and then I was proven wrong. Really? Yeah, but I think that metric might have changed. I think it might be back to people are not finishing games. Yeah, because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, yeah. Uh, Angel Without Wings says, I'm 105 hours into Tears of the Kingdom so far. Jesus fucking Christ. Mr. Rock PR says, you complaining about Breath of the Wild? I just started playing Golden Sun, and I'm already tired. <laughs> Golden Sun, don't even, don't uh... even get me started. Holy Lettuce says, hey, Bob, how did the rest of the last night's stream go? I passed out after you finally got the save stuff figured out and Henkaku was deleted. It is, is it easier or no? Final answer. So this is about the Vita hack. Right. Uh, it is easier, but not by enough to make it worth doing. Right. Uh, I will say. So the Vita hack now, you don't need to connect it to the computer. You can okay. just go to a website and download the hack. Uh, you still have to do, a. there's like a million steps still. Right. And you still have to do all of that. 
but the Vita is actually really, really hard to connect to the computer. Like even through USB, yeah. it just doesn't recognize it. You have to download a certain special thing and it's, it, it, it only works half the time. It's very annoying. Uh, so you do bypass that. So it is a little easier. Uh, I'm going to put all the emulators on and, and see if it's worth yeah. doing for emulation at all. Uh, uh, Jim Slatter Snub says, I'm 60 hours in and I, into Tears of the Kingdom, and I have yet to get up to a single story dungeon. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, Griffin X said, I'm getting a PS5 tomorrow and looking to upgrade to a 4K TV. Any good brands to look uh, to look at that won't break the bank? Uh, I like Samsung, but I, I'm hearing a lot of shit about Samsung. Yeah. I have a Samsung TV that wasn't that expensive, but I know people have problems with it. LG makes good cheap 4K TVs. You just got to make sure you know what you're looking for. But like the top like discount brands of TVs is like Vizio and TCL. But like even Vizio is like getting up there in price because they're like they they think they're Sony now. So oh, they are so not. Yeah, they make good stuff, but you know don't don't spend more than a thousand dollars on a Vizio TV. I think uh, Kevin Kenson likes LG or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people like LG, but you, LG makes really cheap TVs and they make really fucking expensive tvs so just keep your eyes open so you know how breath of the wild is kind of washed out like it looks like the colors yeah. are washed out uh tears of the kingdom is a little better but it's still kind of washed out in 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 most of the game yeah uh hannah was playing it on the tv on the samsung tv uh -huh. and i have it set to standard whenever mm -hmm. when i live with sam he it is the same tv i had in my apartment mm -hmm. i would switch it to standard and then he would switch it back to dynamic and I was like, How, why yeah. does this thing keep going back to like yeah, the demo yeah. mode? He's like, oh, that's me. I, I like that now. Because it, it just blows out all of the yeah. colors. So when you're watching TV, everything's overexposed and shitty looking. Because they just want everything to be bright when, yeah. it's, in, when it's in Best Buy. Because you just want to buy the brightest, most yeah. colorful TV. Putting the freaking TV back to dynamic mode when you're playing Tears of the Kingdom looks fucking awesome. It fixes all <laughs> of the colors. So... I guess people don't realize how washed out that game is if you play it on a TV yeah. because most people have their TV set to the standard whatever the TV yeah. came with. It really does suck the amount of like t uh, tinkering you need to do with TVs now. Because yeah. like you, you can't just buy it yeah. and like set it up. You have to go in. You have to make sure that you know motion smoothing is off. Yeah. You have to make sure HDR is turned on. You have to make sure... You know, the color accuracy in your room is, like, good for the television yeah. and stuff. It's just such a pain in the ass. Tech Niner says game mode. So, like, I don't like game mode because it changes the colors. But sometimes you need to put it in game mode. Yeah. Because that is the low latency mode. Yes. So. Uh, I know some TVs, when you set it in game mode, you can still tweak the colors of yeah, it. Yeah. But, again, you got to do extra work just yeah. to play your game. Yeah. All right. Uh, KJAX says Vizio is much better than TCL in my experience. Yeah, but I mean, Vizio has been around for a lot longer. And he says Costco Vizio TVs are great. I thought Vizio was a store brand. No. No, Vizio is a nationwide brand. What is Best Buy's brand? Insignia. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had an Insignia TV. It was okay. <laughs> I, I, I would expect nothing more yeah. than, than, than that. Edward Boba says, do you have to do that to get the Nintendo mini consoles to work like the Super... Do what? Do what? Turn off motion smooth? I mean, you should put that in game mode, definitely, because otherwise you can't... You literally cannot play Punch-Out because of the, the lag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flo says, oh my hell, I am 15 minutes into Planet of Lana on Game Pass, and this game is so fucking gorgeous. <laughs> what is that? Sounds like a, a cute game. Oh, I played this uh, at uh This is a very pretty game. I, I played this at... um. Oh, know, yeah. At, I've at, seen that. Yeah. Seen what, that pop what, up. yeah. Freaking, where did I play that? PAX. PAX. Thank you. Yeah, that game looks really good. I've yeah. only played a little bit of it. It's 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 like a pretty looking limbo, basically. Yeah. Uh, KJAX says, do you think we could see Analog make a PS1 or PS1 console at some point? I feel like they might be afraid to, yeah. to, to poke that bee's nest, but yeah. uh, we could see it. Yeah, We could. I mean, there's nothing really stopping them. I think that the Turbo Graphics is them testing the waters for a disc-based console. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
Bob, what are your take on what A.G. Onuma said about Zelda Tears of Kingdom basically was basically done when the delay happened? I read, the, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Saw, I saw the headline for that. Uh, I believe it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they always delay Zelda games, so yeah. they probably had no problem delaying this one. Yeah, and uh, and the one article I read said it was delayed uh, to make sure it had that Nintendo polish. Yeah, and know? it does. And yeah. it's very... and. They there had to have been a lot of polish that had to happen because of all of the abilities in this game mm-hmm. that are very easy to break the game with. Yeah. And, and there's there are glitches and stuff, and the frame rate's horrible in a lot of places. But mm-hmm. I've played Pokemon, and I've seen how bad yeah. things can get, and they're nowhere near that bad in this game. So they did. It was worth uh, all of that polish. For also, sure. fucking Skyrim is buggy as hell. You all love that game so much. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, because of one of the things they said was that it was to get the physics of the game just right. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. And, and and it seems like the ascendability and stuff was not an afterthought, but it was pretty far into development when they decided they wanted to do that. Yeah. Unless they decided that that was fun when they were developing Breath of the Wild. But yeah. uh, it seems like... A, they had to go back and change a lot of stuff. Yeah, because they were essentially saying, like, okay, we'll keep this cheat code in. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, EU and JP regions already have a workaround for hacking the 3DS. What What do you mean? It, <coughs> it got was. It's already... It, it, it's fine. Like, I, it works with, with the software update. My hacked 3DS is completely fine. Thank you, guys. Thank you for saying that. They all say bless. <laughs> um, they added it because AG said he had fun using it. Yeah, no, I, I know. That's why I'm like, did they do that during Breath of the Wild? Or did they were they making a whole new game and then decided, wait, this ascendability is cool. Let's change the entire I think game. they were making it. They uh, did it during Tears of the Kingdom. Because we talked about this last week. Mm-hmm. It was basically, you know, it was a cheat code for them. So just get out of like the um the tunnels that they were in or like to ascend to the yeah but the thing when if if you play tears of the kingdom you'll see that the game is set up for that to work right and and for that to not break the game so it is wild to consider that they went back and redid a lot of the game to compensate for that and a lot of the like uh, uh, uh shrines and stuff are set up so that the ascendability is like a like a the way to solve it yeah um uh jack wagon one says even if you haven't hacked it previously oh that's so they say not to update your 3ds because if you want to hack it in the future it might break it right and now if you update it now there will probably be a fix if you ever want to hack it okay i figured that it would <laughs> that they would get around to it pretty quickly all right that's it we're done Thanks all right thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf Den podcast is every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put it up as an archive version over on our youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf podcast where you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want if you prefer right. to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. I wouldn't want to watch me right now. I got stop tripping down my nose. And this is the close-up <laughs> camera. Hi, everybody. If you'd rather listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also on audio podcast, on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your audio podcast from. But no matter where you get your podcast from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms. Yeah, thanks, guys. Uh, go watch AJ. He's, yeah. he's playing a cat simulator i think oh the stray no it's pokemon okay wow this game looks fucking bad (laughs) it's i always shit on it but i haven't seen it in a while that looks like that looks like an alpha build yeah anyway go watch aj uh i will be i'm probably not gonna stream tomorrow uh i will stream on thursday um i'm doing a sponsor stream it's been a while uh i'm gonna play hell of an office which is a game that I've played at PAX and I really liked it. Oh, so I yeah, like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's basically like a Neon White. Got it, yeah. Uh, so I'll play that. 
Uh, so please come. Please come <laughs> to that so I get more sponsor streams. Thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, also, I'm not going to have a video this week because uh, uh, I'm making videos for June. I got. I, I have. I, I made a mode, million yeah. videos already. Yeah. I'm all fucked up. Bye. Bye.